With pleasure, I present Paul Campion. candidate for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science, who will offer some remarks on behalf of the graduates of the Institute of Environmental Sustainability. Good morning, friends. I'm humbled to have this opportunity to speak today. When did you discover what it means to be human? My sophomore year, I was sitting in Andreas Kahlgren's class in Sweden through one of the Institute of Environmental Sustainability's study abroad programs. And there I learned for the first time how over the past 50 years, humans have knowingly pushed our planetary home out of the 10,000 year period of stability that ushered in human civilization. And I learned how the choices we make over the next decade may very well determine our home's next 10,000 years. Whoa. Today, we celebrate our achievements from the last four years, but I want to focus on what we need to achieve in the next 11. That's how long climate scientists have given us, 11 years to avoid catastrophic climate change. It's already damaging our homes, our health, our safety, and our happiness. We won't let it take our futures, too. Our diplomas may say class of 2019, but marked in history, we are the class of zero. Zero emissions, zero excuses, zero time to waste. Across the country, our class stands 7.5 million strong. And in unity, we're giving 2020 political candidates a choice. Have a plan to get to zero emissions or get zero of our votes. Together, we have the power to solve the climate crisis. Every student, every parent, every teacher, every leader, the future is in our hands. When we read about the abolition of slavery, the suffragette victories of the early 1900s, the economy-wide mobilization of the 30s and 40s, the civil rights victories of the 1960s, or the marriage equality victory just four years ago, it can be easy to see these societal transformations as inevitable in retrospect almost as if these common sense overhauls of existing power structures were simply a matter of time. The courage, the strategy, the tactics, and widespread engagement that propelled these game-changing progressions often get lost in rhetoric that either places a single leader on a pedestal or forgets altogether the courage of thousands. Let's fast forward to 2050. Envision with me. You are sitting at your favorite coffee shop casually reading a book about the 2020s. It's 30 years from now, and the book, yes, they still exist, discusses in a matter-of-fact way how we finally got our act together. The book will talk about how we restored democracy. It explains how we rapidly mobilized our society and economy to reach carbon neutrality while centering justice and equity, empowering all. Reading that book, you know that that we was you and me, Mariana, Olivia, Josh, and Vishva. It was you, Carter, and Tonisha. You built the local and sustainable food systems that are resiliently feeding our communities. You restored numerous forests and wetlands and conserved endangered species. You designed and planned resilient cities adapted to climate impacts. You wrote, fought for, and implemented transformative public policy that reclaimed our generation's future. And all you teachers, you're in on this too. You helped by empowering your students to fully realize and exercise their power, organizing for a livable future because the so-called adults in the room governing our country had not had the courage to do so. <laughs> or the book won't say those nice things, but I believe it will. Because in facing this challenge, we have the awesome opportunity to change everything for the better. All that we and our generation need to do is seize this opportunity and save humanity. We are the ones we have been waiting for. I think our four years at Loyola have prepared us to actually do this. For example, many of us survived the great Campion Hall flood of 2016. 
and still graduating. And last year, we felt in our bones that we can accomplish the seemingly impossible as we watched our Ramblers dance to the Final Four. We have organized rallies and marches in solidarity with Missouri Black Lives Matter organizers, women, scientists, non-tenure track faculty, and graduate student workers. We worked on campaigns for renewable energy and sustainable investment of our endowment. Divest Loyola. Most importantly, we have learned that love is the opposite of fear. When we responded to the 2016 election by coming together and caring for our fellow Ramblers who are dreamers, we have learned the importance of interdependence while building relationships in our learning communities, student clubs, and faith communities. We have learned that as persons for and with others, a life committed to social justice brings far more meaning and joy than we could ever imagine. Love, community, and justice. Lastly, we have learned from the Jesuit tradition how to adopt a thoughtful and discerning spirit that will guide us in navigating these turbulent times. This Loyola education has equipped us with the knowledge and the core values we need to not only thrive in this world, but also to transform it. When did you discover what it means to be human? Each Rambler day, we have gained a little more perspective on this question as we live our answer. Back in that class, Andreas introduced us to a film called Journey of the Universe to help us take the long view. I would like to leave you with the film's closing line. Over the course of 14 billion years, Hydrogen gas transformed itself into mountains, butterflies, the music of Bach, and you and me. And these energies coursing through us may indeed renew the face of the earth.